Hello ladies and gentlemen. The purpose of this video is to show you how to install Python and an ID called PyScript on your personal computers. I go to Google here and I search for Python. The machine suggests Python download and all sorts of things. Welcome to python.org. This is where I'm going to find Python. It's available in several versions, so watch out for the one that you actually need. Downloads, it says. Right. Releases, current one. Python Download for Windows, Python 3.8.2. And there's also Python 2. Point something that remains available to download. Python's 2. Point something has a syntax that is quite different from 3 onwards. Get version 3. And also watch out if you use uh, some tutorials uh, or even books because version 2 was a little different. Anyway, 382. Let's press on this thing and we are going to save this file. It is getting saved here. Download. I am singing because I will be cutting this stuff anyway. We don't care. Uh, zoom. Wait, 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 done. Okay, now it's done. Press on this thing to execute it, of course. And that will do the install. The machine tells me if, uh, are you sure this is safe? And do you really want to do this? Uh, let's put this aside. Uh, yes, I want to run it. So as well as Python, it gets the documentation. Okay, fair enough. That's, I guess, help information about the libraries and keywords that are available pip what's pip download and install other python packages i guess that's good so if i need a package having something that helps me automatically get the package that i'm looking for that's a good thing tcltk and ideally install tk inter tcltk is a set of ready-made tools to display forms and windows and this sort of things. So, you know, the, the, the thing we're looking at now that I'm moving here, uh, the window with its uh, little ready-made uh, minus sign and cross and maximize sign, which is disabled and the uh, displays here that look so good, the buttons and the tick boxes and all that kind of things. These are ready-made visual components and TCLTK is a library that display these. IDLE is a development environment. Some people like it. Uh, personally, I like another one better and I'll show you how to install that too. A development environment is a space where it's easy to edit a program, type it up, uh, um, change it, that sort of thing. And that often integrates, we say integrated development environment that often integrates the typing up with testing checking for errors mm, managing projects that are made of multiple files all of these kinds of useful things when we are editing computer code the test suite i don't quite know what it is but since it's being installed and it looks like everything else is useful i'll trust them press next it asks me a few more things. I'm leaving the defaults alone, really. We didn't change any of these options in the end, but it's a useful thing to do to actually go through the mm, custom installation to find out information about what's being installed. And I press the install button. Last bit of whatever it is. No. Hello, Houston, we have a problem. The installation's done, hopefully. Close that. Having a quick look to the side, just off the recorded screen. Yes, Python seems to have been installed. And along with it, there are various useful things. So I've got a Python 3.8 thing here which includes Python, okay, the manuals, yeah, okay, and some documentation like that. And there is something called IDLE. Now, IDLE 
is a development environment. Read that as idle. It's a space in which we can run code. Can I do two plus two here? Yes, therefore I can run code, but I can also do things like um, create a file that I guess will contain code and save that and run that. Some people like Ideally, and if you have had Python classes in elsewhere in schools or places like that, uh, and you're comfortable with Ideally, go ahead, use that. But I'm going to use a different one, get you to install a different one. So I'm going to shut Ideally now, and we're going to do another search after Python, which is to search for something by Scripter. E R. There. By Scripter. There, with its pretty icon there. There it's explained. PyScripter is an open source Python integrated development. I could press download here, but I know that my computer won't like this download. It's offering me to download a version of the code which is in 64 bit. Now, this knackered old laptop won't take that. So I'll scroll that. I'll scroll down. And I can see that there are several versions here in the project activity. The 64-bit version that I chose not to download. There's a couple of x86. They are really 32-bit versions. Perfect logic of, comp of software naming, isn't it? Uh, one version that has a setup thing, so it has an easy installer. The other version, which is zipped. The easy installer is better if you're working on a computer that tends to be your machine all the time. The zip version is better if you want something that you can move. For example, if you want to place your software on the USB stick and then take that USB stick with you to run it on your parents' computer and then your friend's computer and then the university's computer and libraries and some local library's computer it's portable. I'm going to use the setup one because I'm using that laptop all the time anyway. And it's mine, mine, mine. All right, there's a little bit of a countdown. It should start downloading in a sec. By the way, SourceForge, while we're waiting for the download, is a place that, ha, ah, say save. SourceForge holds a lot of software that can be downloaded, a lot of open source software in particular open source software is free but it also has other advantages it is free to distribute to other people it is free to change if one day you feel brave and get into the source code of the software yeah. and it has become a, a major influence okay it says here keep me updated but i'm not sure that i care uh, the downloads are here and it says here set up one and we can install PyScripter and we'll see how PyScripter works together with Python. Now, if you are installing this at home, you need to put in Python first and then PyScripter on top of it. Okay, run this. My antivirus is asking me if I really want to do this. Yes, I know it's safe. And the installation will progress. It is in English. 32-bit uh, version off. Yeah, that's the one I wanted. It uh, will install in this place called Program Files x86. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. Uh, and it will be put in. No, I like my programming to be tidy. So I'm going to put this here. In fact, I'll move Python 3.8 here in a sec. Uh, programming slash PyScripto, yeah, that will do. Uh, and then next, create a desktop. I like to have one. Edit with, uh, ah, that's to be able to right click on a file and open it into the PyScripto ID. I like that too, so I'll keep it ticked. Press next. And finally, it's there. And I need to approve this uh, and done and launch 
should show up like this python the machine has found python 382 good firewall no 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 need to block access to python there okay fantastic it's working we can see that there is a program and there is a space in which i can see the result of programs that we're running we'll explore what pyscriptor does in another video i'll make a short series